So this is Jonathan Ive. He's the former chief design officer for Apple. Nine years ago, he gave an interview about what he learned working with Steve Jobs, Steve's massive focus, creativity, work ethic. I don't know too much about Jonathan Ive, but sounds like this is the guy that you talk to if you need to design the next generation, innovative, cutting edge, physical product for the consumer market. We've heard these rumblings that OpenAI, Sam Altman, and Johnny Ive are coming to build a device, some sort of an AI device. Now we're getting some more details about it, and it seems like the plan is to build the iPhone of artificial intelligence. Some people are also describing it as AirPods of AI. Basically, the goal is to create a more natural way to interact with AI, and this plan is fueled by over $1 billion in funding from SoftBank CEO Masayoshi Sun. It sounds like Johnny Ive's team was also behind the Orb Retina Scanner. And of course, they're not the only ones that are going after these wearable AI devices. We have Rabbit R1, a simple device that you talk to, kind of like a walkie-talkie, that then executes various things on your behalf. There's the Humane AI Pin, among other projects, including open source ones. And this AI device that Sam Altman and Johnny Ive are building, it sounds like it won't look like a phone. So perhaps it's something that you talk to that executes things on your behalf, but not necessarily something that has the same functionality that an iPhone or an Android phone would. Meanwhile, Sam Altman is in London telling people what's coming next. You have multimodality, reasoning, personalization, reliability, and next bucket is agents. This is the next big thing that's coming. Agentic AI that's capable of executing various things on your behalf. Of course, reliability has been a big problem, but now more and more companies are coming out with ways to make these agents more reliable. Also helping them run on device, make them faster, lighter, less expensive to run. We've seen a few studies out of Stanford and Apple showing how tiny language models outperform GPT-4 for certain specific tasks related to having these agentic capabilities on, on your phone or your laptop. Things like being able to understand the screen as well as run functions to interact with your phone. The full presentation that Sam Altman gave isn't available yet, but this is likely related to what Microsoft is doing in London as well. Now, I don't actually know if it's related or not, but it seems like it certainly could be. Microsoft is announcing a new Microsoft AI hub in London with Mustafa Suleiman as the CEO of that Microsoft AI division. So just so you understand what's happening, so this is Mustafa Suleiman. So he's one of the co-founders of DeepMind, now known as Google DeepMind, along with Demis Hassabis, the other co-founder of DeepMind. So Demis is now at Google. He's working at Google the DeepMind and the Google proper, those two sides are kind of merging more and more. And so Demis is running things over there. Interesting tidbit, this guy, apparently he began his uh, sort of career doing computer games. He worked at Bullfrog Productions, doing a little design on Syndicate. He was the lead programmer on a 1994 game theme park and was the lead AI programmer on the 2001 God on the 2001 game Black and White. So it's kind of an interesting situation where Demis is on the Google side, Mustafa is on the Microsoft side, and by hiring Mustafa Suleiman, Microsoft gets a disruptive leader to push it past fierce rivals in consumer artificial intelligence. And for Suleiman, the role could make him one of the most important people in tech and places his fiery exit from Google far behind him. So it sounds like Suleiman left Google because there were some bullying allegations, which he has denied. And now he's trying to sort of reestablish himself as an important figure now working for Microsoft. And it sounds like there's this push by Microsoft to build a larger presence in the UK, in London, saying there is an enormous pool of AI talent and expertise in the UK. And Microsoft AI plans to make a significant long-term investment in the region as we begin hiring the best AI scientists and engineers into this new AI hub. They'll be posting job openings and actively hiring exceptional individuals. If you're in London, in the AI space, this sounds like a really good opportunity. In other news, TSMC, the massive chip manufacturer out of Taiwan, is slowly building its home base here in the U.S. in Arizona. 
So the US government basically passed the CHIP Act amongst a couple other things to try to start building some of these AI chips, some of these advanced GPUs and other chips that are needed for AI to start building them here on US soil. So we might see it being operational by 2030. Now, the reason this is important is because currently the vast majority of chips are produced in Taiwan. If Taiwan were to disappear, the entire world would feel this massive shock. We wouldn't go back to the dark ages perhaps, but it would certainly be a very large blow for the various global tech companies and infrastructure that we have. At the same time, there's a growing fear of a Chinese invasion of Taiwan, where 90% of cutting edge chips are currently made. And this is pushing the US to step up efforts to boost its domestic semiconductor production. TSMC is expanding its manufacturing capabilities in Arizona such that for the first time ever, we'll be making at scale the most advanced semiconductor chips on the planet here in the United States of America. We are massively strengthening our national security position. Meanwhile, there are tons of AI chip manufacturers that are popping up. Very legit, credible companies that are focusing their efforts on various applications of AI and specific chips to solve those problems. We've covered Grok with a Q. This chip is a language processing unit, as opposed to, for example, a graphical processing unit, which is what NVIDIA is famous for. And it's able to process the large language models, the language queries really, really fast. We've seen a few demos here where people would be able to have a real-time conversation with a large language model that responds to you in real time. It's able to keep up its end of the conversation just like a human being would. Of course, we have Xtropic, so it's another company in the Bay Area that is envisioning a completely different approach to creating these AI chips. While most people are talking about building chips that deal with the classical physics, physics as we are used to and as we understand it, and the quantum computers and the quantum chips are seen as sort of like the next evolution of that what Xtropic is building is somewhere kind of in between. They're building something based on thermodynamic fluctuations. Sam Altman has talked about a separate company that would develop and manufacture server chips to power AI, possibly in competition with NVIDIA. And it also seems like SoftBank CEO Masayoshi Sun also has some chip manufacturing ambitions. I'm not 100% sure exactly where they are with that. But the point is that there's a lot of smart and very well-funded teams and all these smart people with a lot of capital are all working on solving these issues of an undersupply of AI chips. Sam Altman has estimated the global sort of capital expenditure for building all the AI infrastructure that we need, including these fabs, including everything that we need to fully take advantage of the AI technology. He pegged it somewhere as high as something like seven trillion. That's the global bill that we all have to contribute to to make this a reality. And as you can see, a lot of people are taking this seriously, including the US government, Microsoft, and many other big tech companies and many other government players. Another piece of news is that the US is investing 8.5 billion just to start with Intel. The investment will create nearly 30,000 jobs and expand the semiconductor capacity across the country. So definitely some interesting times ahead. A lot of companies are betting it all on AI, building out the infrastructure, hiring the AI talent. The space is heating up. With that said, my name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.